Friends in Christ, Pastor Brian here. This coming Sunday, August 21st, we will be offering a blessing of the backpacks for our students as they return to school next week. We'll also offer a special blessing on those children, their parents and all those staff and faculty who are already returning to classrooms and are given responsibility to educate our children. We give thanks to God for all those who have been gifted for and chosen a vocation in education. And especially, we give thanks for those educators and staff who happen to be part of this community of faith. People like Emmy Williams, Blake Williams, Barb Hilgenkamp, Kent Noska, Chad Gertis, Shelby Miller, Caitlin Hansen, Jake Munson, Marcy Weber, Peg Campbell, who happens to be retired, Heather Allen, Nancy Kaufman, Christy Rummel, Jen Armour. Who are the ones in your sphere that you give thanks for? Maybe they're family members, friends, beloved partners in educating your own children. Please feel free to share with us any members of the congregation who are involved in education at any level and in any way if there's someone that we have overlooked. As we begin this new school year, Many school districts are facing a shortage of qualified candidates for teaching positions. The same can be said for school bus drivers and other staff vital to making our schools work. Administrators are in the unenviable position of trying to provide a safe and effective learning environment, sometimes without the full staffing that they need. And all of this is coming on the heels of two very stressful years. Everyone, teachers, administrators, staff, parents, students are stretched very thin and often may not even realize it. So you may ask, especially if you don't have children in our school system anymore, what can we do? Well, I think the main thing is we can attend to the one thing we can control, which is ourselves. One of the biggest challenges I see in our nation today is the way in which we are constantly breaking the Eighth Commandment. Do you remember that one? You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Now, as Martin Luther reminds us in his small catechism, this means that we are to fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray or slander them or destroy their reputations. Instead, we're to come to their defense. Speak well of them. Interpret everything they do in the best possible light. Now, in this particular case, that can be as simple as remembering that these educators, administrators, staff, they're not faceless bureaucrats or cogs in some indoctrination machine. They are literally our neighbors, friends, human beings just like us. They have feelings, shortcomings, gifts. They have families and obligations that come with that and challenges that come with that, just like us. And they also are overwhelmingly dedicated to providing the best educational experience your children can have, our children can have, within the bounds of what they are given. Now, keeping these things in mind does not mean we ignore places where things happen that we don't agree with or that we question. But when we keep the humanity of these people created in the image of God in mind, we'll approach them differently, won't we? With respect for their calling and basic humanity, with grace and goodwill, even as we seek answers to our questions or we push for something different from what is offered. Now, as God knew when handing down this commandment to Moses, this approach has benefits for both us and our neighbors. When we approach others, giving them the benefit of the doubt with grace and goodwill, well, we often find a willing partner in improving what is happening. And even when you don't, you'll find that your own mental health and well-being benefits from this kind of approach. And so as another school year begins, let us pray. Let us pray for our children. Let us pray for the staff and faculty, including coaches, officials, and so many others who will be educating them and caring for them. Let us pray for their parents. 
And let us also pray for the help of the Holy Spirit to obey the Eighth Commandment in our own lives. That we may, in some small way, ease the pressure and burden placed on these neighbors and help them live a life that is fuller and more abundant, the life which God desires for all of us. Thanks be to God.